Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. The name of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh Bahasham, and the name of Yahweh Shai, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahasham, and the name of Rechakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. All right. And um, I wanted to do a uh, lesson on Zechariah, the uh, fourth chapter, uh, which, you know, ironically, yesterday early, um, you know, sometimes you awake from uh, sleep and you can't go back, but you still need sleep because uh, that prior night we did the New Year's Eve of Destruction. Uh, you know, lesson pretty much after that, you know, we broke bread, you know, brothers was drinking. And um, by the time I got home, it's probably about two. All right. Uh, in the morning, by the time I went to bed, two thirty. But I woke up that very morning at around, uh, let's say, seven, six, seven. And I couldn't go back to sleep. So I just turned on the little bed light and I uh, started reading the scriptures you know I was all over the place just reading and then the Bible landed me in Zechariah <laughs> um, and I read like Zechariah 2 3 4 5 6 7 you know and then I started going to other places but it was just the spirit how you know I um, was catching up on videos today and I uh, finally got to fully listen to this video done by the elder apostle Tahar and uh, this video is called the reason why we do so many videos the uh, title of this video um, is dealing with uh, a question that was asked on the uh, comment board and I'll read it this is from a brother meek student of the ministry Shalom elder apostle Tahar I apologize for being off topic, but I couldn't find a video on Zechariah chapter 4 breakdown. I can't understand it. Would it be possible for you to break it down for me? I'm sorry to disturb you. Shalom. All right. The Apostle Tahar said, you, you're not disturbing us. Ultimately, that's what we're set up to do, you know, is to feed the flock. You know, uh, sometimes brothers and sisters uh, ask questions that have nothing to do with the video uh, on the comment board. That's all right. You know, at the end of the day, it is our duty, you know, um, to, to the best of our ability, uh, see these questions and deal with them. Now, every question isn't going to be answered right off the top. You know, we have to learn that coming up, you know, certain things you have to labor and toil. All right. And the Heavenly Father will eventually open up the spirit unto you. So that's why it takes patience. We all have to deal with that. But certain things, uh, the, the Lord will put the spirit on brothers to deal with. Um, and Apostle Tahar said, it wasn't like a challenge, but he put it out there that brothers uh, could do a video on it. So ironically, uh, as I read that, you know, yesterday morning, I come this morning and see this. So I'm like, that has to be the spirit, you know. And it, it's been happening like that a lot. There's a lot of things that have been, you know, names that have been mentioned. You know, um, things, you know, brothers will look up or speak or say, and then you look up and something's happening with that particular person or thing you thought about or mentioned. It's weird. A lot of things are uh, being manifested in these latter days, but um, the page for Apostle Tahar is Tahar Banloya. Um, make sure you subscribe to that page so that we be edified. So without further ado, Let's get into Zechariah, the fourth chapter, so that we can get some edification and Lord willing, uh, the spirit uh, works with me and with your minds and period with the, you know, the elect to gain understanding. Now, this is Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Um, Zechariah was around during the rebuilding of the temple. He belonged to a uh, priestly uh, family. Um, his father was Bacarius and uh He's also a descendant of Ido, all right, who was a priest. And this family was among many of the Jews who, after the sacking of the temple by the Babylonians, 
and our people being carried away into captivity were uh, ordered all right, and given the decree by Cyrus and then later on Darius to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. All right, now ironically, Zechariah, uh, which is Zechariah in the Hebrew, means Yahweh remembers. And when you deal with uh, the book of Zechariah, it is heavily uh, focused on the restoration of the temple, the restoration of the Israelites. Okay, and it has uh, various visions of that. All right, and various prophecies. Okay, um, there's a lot in this book. Um, so when you look at him, he's also a contemporary of Haggai. Okay, uh, Zerubbabel, which is going to be mentioned, which is a very, very key, important name within the whole grand scheme of things. Who was the governor of Judah at that time? And we'll get into him in just a minute. Just a little background on Zechariah, but uh, we'll start at verse one. This is Zechariah, the fourth chapter, in the first verse. Now, Haggai, remember, um, in his book, you know, basically got on the leadership of Israel to pretty much get off their asses and rebuild the temple. You know, so Zechariah was around that time as well. And when you read his writings, he had the same message. All right, Zechariah 4 and 1, it says, And the angel that talked with me came again and walked all right, and wake me as a man that is wake, uh, waking out of sleep. It says, so he's having a vision, okay? And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and the seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. All right. Now, when dealing with the candlesticks, we can go to the book of Revelation. Yeah, all right. The first chapter when John the Revelator received the vision on the Isle of Patmos, we can uh, start at verse 10. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega. All right. This is Yahweh Shai. He's the beginning and the ending. Okay the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamos and to Th uh, Thyatria and to Sardius and to Philadelphia and to uh, Laodicea uh, which ultimately these are the seven churches set up by the apostles all right which is symbolic ultimately of the elect the remnant those who the Lord have created to teach and receive this knowledge, this wisdom, you see. Now, as you read, it says, and I turned again, all right, and I turned to see the voice which spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. You see that? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. All right, so we know that the candlestick represents wisdom. You see, as a matter of fact, before I, go, before I finish that, we can go here to Matthew, the uh, fifth chapter in the 14th verse. It says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Okay. And it give it light unto all that are in the house. You see that that candlestick gives light to all that are in the house. Ironically, the name of the high priest of that first covenant all right was aaron all right and what was that all right the 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 light all right <laughs> the true light is the wisdom knowledge and understanding of yahweh bashim shai man okay but the light which the men of the lord go out and preach give it light all right unto all that are in the house so that they can see all right it says let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven Okay, so going back to Revelation, okay, uh, I start at 12 again. It says, and I turned to see the voice which spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. You see that? Seven golden ca candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, 
all right, and a gird about the paps with a golden girdle. So he's seeing a vision of Yahweh in his glorified state. But in the midst of uh, that all was seven candlesticks. And then he describes them, all right, it also mentions the candlesticks. And I believe, uh, let's see here. Revelation 1 and 19, write, write the things which thou hast seen. And you can read the whole chapter. But uh, I just wanted to get through Zechariah. But we have to hit these precepts to uh, get understanding. And the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. And the mystery of the seven stars which thou knowest in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks. All right. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Because remember, the angels watch over the elect. All right. The angels are the ones who guide the minds of the elect to speak all right, and or understand the truth. You see that? And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. You see that? And which fulfill the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the gospel being preached and received in the earth. You see? Now, also I believe in Revelation 2. Uh, yep, this is a good one. This is Revelation 2 and 5. Remember, therefore, whence thou art fallen, as he's speaking to one of the churches. Um, he said, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. And ironically, when you read about these seven churches, you know, he, 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 he bigs them up on things, but then he tells them that you all have wickedness going on as well and what to fix. So we can read these seven, all right, uh, uh, churches, all right, and, and, and you, you will get cut, you see, and we all have to repent and, co and, and come harder and seek Yahweh Bashmi Shai 10 times more. All right, as Apostle Tahar t coined uh, uh, this year, the year of hastening the coming of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So it says, remember, therefore, what thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. You see, so the candlestick represents wisdom, the, 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 the knowledge, understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the fullness of the gospel. As the scriptures say, bind the testimony and seal it amongst my disciples. Okay, uh, let's see here. I believe there was one more place. Yep, uh, in Revelation 2, when you go up to verse 1, it says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, that he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, and that's Yahawashai, who walketh in the midst of the seven candlesticks. All right. Now, remember, in uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter, I believe it talks about um, Revelation uh, five and one. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within showing you that Yahweh Shai. All right. That Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are two separate powers. All right. Now, Yahweh Shai comes of the most high Yahweh. All right. But Yahweh Shai sits at the right hand. And what comes from the right hand? The Holy Spirit sent from on high to the churches. You see, the Most High have put Yahweh in authority of that process. He is the high priest. That is Melchizedek. Okay. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with the seven seals thereof. All right. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud vo voice. All right. And the, the book written and on the backside, sealed with seven seals is what? The fullness of the understanding of the gospel, man. Okay? And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth was able to open a book, neither look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. See, the root of David, all right, which when you go into prophecy, it will be the root of David that will restore all things. That's the high priest in Genesis, the 49th chapter, Shiloh. All right. It says, The root of David have prevailed to open to book the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So he is responsible, all right, through the order of the Most High Yahweh for sending us the understanding down on the earth because for a period of time, no man could understand this, 
Okay, so going back to Zechariah, the fourth chapter, we need to go back to those we will. When you deal with this candlestick, it's just representative of the wisdom. All right, seven lamps, the light, okay, and seven pipes. Now, what is a pipe used to do for, for things to flow? All right, now, where does this truth flow to? Okay, verse uh, three says, Zechariah four and three, and two olive trees by it. You see that? And two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl and another upon the left side thereof. All right. And we know that Israel is symbolic of an olive tree in the Holy Scriptures, man. Let's get Jeremiah 11 and 15. It says, what have my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she had wrought lewdness, speaking of the nation of Israel. And notice it said two olive trees because you have the northern and southern kingdom who after the 40 years of peace have been broken apart. Okay, but there is a promise in the latter days the Lord will bring the two northern and southern kingdom, all 12 tribes back together. Okay, and Zechariah deals with that a lot. It says, what have my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she have wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from thee. All right, when thou doest evil, all right, then thou uh, rejoicest. All right, the Lord have called thy name a green olive tree. See that fair and of goodly fruit with the noise of a great tumult. He have kindled fire upon it and the branches of it are broken. OK, and that was, um, you know, the, the Lord sent the Babylonians. You see, and this also brings light to Revelation or Romans, the 11th chapter, rather Romans, the 11th chapter, speaking of the, uh, the, the, the natural branches. All right. Which were broken off and the wild olive tree, which was grafted onto the tree. All right, which that's basically speaking of you had the Israelites who were raised in the customs, the Jews who were raised in the customs, knowing that they were Israelites, keeping the laws. All right, pretty much to the best of their ability. And then you had those wild, that wild uh, olive tree. All right, which wasn't cultivated in the ways of uh, uh, Israel. They were raised in Greco-Roman culture, you see, and that represents us. All right. Uh, uh, being grafted back on contrary to that first covenant, but through faith, you see. But anyway, as you can see here, Israel is likened unto a olive tree also. All right. This is uh, Isaiah 17 and four. And in that day, it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin and the fatness of his uh, flesh shall wax lean. All right. We'll be brought back to health. All right. And it shall be as when a harvestman gathereth the corn and reapeth the ears with his arm, and it shall be as he that gathereth ears in the valley of Rephraim. Okay, you can look that up. It says, Yet gleaning grapes shall be left therein. You see that? As the shaking of an olive tree. See, this is speaking of the remnant. Two or three berries in the top of the upmost, uppermost bow, four or five in the outmost fruitful branches thereof, said the Lord of hosts, meaning that will be that remnant those very few that are left okay but he likens it also to an olive tree you see in that day shall a man look to his maker and his eyes shall have respect unto the holy ones of israel and that's what's happening here all right and there's er there's various other scriptures where you can link israel all right uh, uh to an olive tree man all right uh isaiah 24 and 13 all right when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people there shall be as a shaking of an olive tree, all right, because the Lord shook the tree, all right, but all, those few berries, those few olives that are left there on, that is the remnant, okay, and what comes from the olive? Oil, you see, which is likened unto wisdom, this truth, the spirit, all right, and as gleaning grapes when the ventures, it says, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. You see, man, and there's various other scriptures um, that deal with the olive tree. Now, going back here, let's read it again. Zechariah 4 and 3. And two olive trees by it upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. Those are the pillars. When you uh, look at Solomon's temple, all right, when you uh, deal with it, 
there was a pillar on the when, on right on the side of the steps to enter into the to, to the temple. You had the pillar on the right side and the pillar on the left, which was symbolic of the northern and southern kingdom, right? Which is fulfilled ultimately in the 144,000, the, the 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 priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, which that wisdom is directly shared with. All right, it says uh, that in Revelation the uh, 14th chapter. Okay, these have the new song. Okay, also when you get Revelation the 11th chapter, as he's measuring the temple. Okay, in verse three it says. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. All right. And they shall prophesy. So these are the prophets. Okay. A thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Meaning we would have a certain amount of time where we would come unto the earth and prophesy. All right. And notice it said two witnesses. Why does it say that? Because out of the mouth of two witnesses. All right. Shall the, the, the one who was wicked be condemned. You can read that as Deuteronomy 17 and 6. Right, Deuteronomy uh, 19 and 15. Let's read Deuteronomy 17 and 6. At the mouth of two witnesses or three, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. All right, so it's through this gospel that Esau, the, the wicked of our people, all of them <laughs> will be blamed and condemned. All right, and taken down. All right, now going back to Revelation, it says, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. All right. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Okay. These have power to shut heaven. All right, which uh, that it rained not Elijah did that and he was known as what the greatest prophet you say so this is speaking of ultimately the knowledge wisdom and understanding okay being given unto that that uh, those those 144,000 all right northern and southern kingdom being brought back together okay they have the new song the oil pretty much is, is poured into these two okay so let's read that again. Zechariah 4 and 3. And the olive trees, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side of the bowl thereof. All right. The pillars. <laughs> All right. It says, So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? All right. And the angel talked with me. All right. That talked with me answered and said, unto me knowest thou not what these be he said no my lord <laughs> now watch this all right it says and then he answered unto me spake unto, and, and he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of yahweh unto zerubbabel all right saying not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord of hosts now who is zerubbabel all right I believe his name means sown all right uh, uh in babylon the seed that was sown in babylon but let's read it let's read it here zerubbabel okay Z zarah babal sown in babylon all right and in the latter days <laughs> the, the 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 bulk of the israelites the main deliverance all right would be those israelites that remnant that was sown in Babylon and the various different captivities that we were in. Now, who is Zerubbabel? He was the governor of Judah at the time, all right, of the rebuilding of the temple. And who is he a direct descendant of? All right, David. All right, and in spirit, if you can't receive it, that is David. And we're going to show you how. It says the grandson of King Jehoiakim, the leader of the first group of all right of returning exiles from babylon you see that he's the leader the governor <laughs> of the first group all right uh that returned from the babylonian captivity all right now what are we building we were building the tabernacle of david now let's go to a little history real quick zerubbabel 
governor of Judea. See that? He was the governor. <laughs> Zerubbabel also spelled Zerubbabel. All right. Flourished 6th century BC, governor of Judea, under whom the rebuilding of the, all right, it says Jewish temple at Jerusalem took place. Of Davidic origin, see, he's a descendant of David. You see, and who's going to come out of David? All right. The one who will restore all things and sit on the throne of David. All right. And continue his throne forever and ever and ever. Okay. Which is Yahawashai. All right. This is symbolic of the government that is going to come. All right. The tabernacle of David. All right. So it's a very important thing happening in the book of Zechariah. And at this time, it was all symbolic of what was to come. You see. Of Davidic origin, Zerubbabel is thought to have originally been a Babylonian Jew who returned to Jerusalem at the head of a band of Jewish exiles, all right, and became governor of Judea under the Persians, okay? Influenced by the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, all right, which basically they had to get on him, all right? <laughs> he didn't just get got on as David, all right, Peter. All right, and so forth. He got got on as Zerubbabel. He had to get cursed out pretty much when you read the book of Haggai. He had to get on a leadership to get off of their asses and pretty much rebuild, man. Feed my sheep, basically. Okay? Influenced by the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, he rebuilt the temple. All right? He was the governor at the forefront of it. See? As a descendant of the house of David, Zerubbabel rekindled Jewish messianic hopes. Okay, so his 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 presence, although a lot of people don't put influence on it, was very important around this time. All right, because yeah, you needed the the the, the priest and everything like that, but ultimately, it would be through Judah that the true temple would be built. So this is all symbolic. Now going back. All right. Now, going back, you know, after, you know, uh, Zechariah asked in verse five, you know, what are the two olive trees and, you know, and the, and, and the angel. All right. Answered in verse six. And then he answered me and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of Yahweh unto Zerubbabel. All right. Saying not by might nor by power, but by my spirit said the Lord because the Holy Spirit will be sent all right unto the remnant in the latter days and the tabernacle of David will be would be rebuilt you see which is the spiritual temple in which we have the victory and access all right back to the most high through Yahweh Shai okay and when you go into prophecy it will be the throne of David that will be established okay now as you read so it's not going to be by, you know, might, by power, by us taking up guns or doing all of this. It's going to be by the spirit, all right, uh, uh, that the true temple be rebuilt, okay, and we get the victory, all right? It says, who art thou, O great mountain, okay? And what is a mountain? Symbolic of a government, all right? It says, before Zerubbabel, all right, thou shall become a plain, all right? Now, when you look up the word plain, okay? Maya Shara uh, uh, War Maya Shawar Okay, level place, uprightness. See? A uh, level country. Alright, table, uh, land, plain, level place, uprightness. Okay, and then you go to the root word Ya Yashar, alright, which is the root word of my name, Yasharwan, what? To be right, to be level, to be upright, to be just, to be lawful. You see? So, going back here, <laughs> let's see what this is saying. Okay? Who art thou, O great mountain? Before, before Zerubbabel, okay, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone. Now, who's the headstone speaking of? Yahawashai. Because Yahawashai will come out of the loins and lineage of David. See, let's look up this word headstone. All right, I believe a headstone is like something that seals the deal. Okay. Um,
a bond okay let's just get to the point um common stone stone as material marble hewn stones precious stones stones of fire and Yahweh is known as that stone okay um sacred object see uh let's see and he's that great millstone man all right uh petrified with terror perverse and hard hard heart metaphorically all right but what that is speaking of is Yahawashai. okay let's go to the root word all right but but nah it says to build to rebuild to establish to cause to continue to build to rebuild to be built all right and Yahawashai <laughs> through the spirit is rebuilding the tabernacle of David you see wow to establish to be made permanent so the headstone all right is symbolic of Yahawashai who will come out of the loins of David and that's promised all throughout the scriptures all right now let's go back give me one second here as a matter of fact let's get Psalms 132 real quick Psalms 132 and 11 Yahweh have sworn in truth unto David he will not return from it of the fruit of thy body see that of the fruit of thy body which was Nathan told him all right the 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 the, the one who's going to build the temple that we are established forever and ever and ever as a nation is going to come out of your loins okay the loins and lineage of David. What did Yahweh Shai say? I am the root, all right, and offspring of David. See? He's he's all throughout the book. See, you just have to have ears to hear and eyes to see. All right. It is of the the, the, the Lord swore unto David, and he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set up thy throne. All right. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony. All right, that I shall teach them, which is happening right now. Their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore, man. The elect, starting with the, the 144,000, man. For the Lord have chose Zion. He have desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. You see, and that's going to happen. And when you go all throughout the scriptures, you can read about the throne of David being established. That's how we are going to get the victory. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 9 and 6, from, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David, okay, upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh will perform this. The Lord have sent a word into Jacob and he have lighted upon Israel. That light. You see? And that's only given all right, to the remnant, the elect. Starting with the uh, 144,000. And we have to keep pushing that. So going back here. Let's read this again. Zechariah 4 and 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? Okay. Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become upright, righteousness. Okay, because it's the throne of David. Okay, uh, even going to Luke. I just typed in throne of David and here are all of the scriptures that come up. But uh, Luke 1 and 32. It's beautiful that it's written in the New Testament as well because these Christians like to get away from the throne of David. Okay. And this is speaking of the Messiah. It says, Luke 1 and 32, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. So the kingdom of heaven is the throne of David. Okay. And when you deal with that, that's why the, the, you got to deal with prophecy. That is proof all nations cannot be saved because the Lord said, I will build the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. Did all nations partake in the throne of David? Hell no. All right, now once it was established, Solomon did deal fairly. 
okay but the nation still had to be beaten down beaten down and put into subject all right under david and his mighty men okay and that's going to happen again under yahweh shai and the 144,000. now let's go back here to zechariah 4 and 7 who art thou o great mountain because what were they doing at that time they were trying to rebuild the temple all right to establish order again before zerubbabel thou shalt become upright all right that's what that word plain means and he shall bring forth the headstone therefore with shoutings crying grace grace unto it all right and through yahweh all right we have grace all right which john the baptist all right his name means grace and he baptized yahweh and pretty much transferred the priesthood all right from aaron because uh, john the baptist was a direct descendant of aaron to the messiah who's now our high priest and we are entering into a new covenant we're not in that covenant yet but we're under grace this grace allows us a period to build that temple all right in defiled flesh you see that but we're building the temple all right and we're overcoming death okay so that would come through zerubbabel that would come through the the loins and lineage of david he would bring forth the headstone you see Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel, all right, I have laid the foundation of this house, all right, because it's the tabernacle of David. <laughs> you see, the house of David. See, his hands shall also finish it, all right, and thou shalt know that Yahweh of hosts have sent me unto you, all right. And this is a, a prophecy of what would happen in the latter days because you got to remember in the book of Haggai, as a matter of fact, let's go here real quick. I'll just go to his name because I remember Haggai told him directly, you know, in the spirit. It's in Haggai somewhere. Yep. Uh, Haggai. Mm. Yep. Yep, uh, this is uh, Haggai. Uh, I start at one. It says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, all right, Yahweh Tazadak, the high priest, saying, let's see here then uh saying pretty much he was cursing them out to rebuild to get up and get off your asses and let's rebuild this temple then you jump to verse 12 then zerubbabel the son of shittiel and joshua the son of josedek the high priest with all the remnant with all the remnant see that of the people obeyed the voice of the lord their god and the words of haggai the prophet see the lord sends you prophets to stir up the minds of the remnant and that's what's happening again I mean, we're rebuilding this temple right and the lord as the lord their god have sent them and the people did fear before the lord so the words of the prophets got the, the people scared man <laughs> so zerubbabel got off his ass after that rebuking verse 14 and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shittiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of the remnant of all the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord their God. All right. Now, when you go to the second chapter, okay, I'm going to just go ahead and pull it up here. He says something to Zerubbabel in spirit. Okay. He says something to Zerubbabel in spirit. Give me one second here while it loads. Let's see here. Zechariah, uh, ha Haggai 2, all right, and 1. I'll just start at 1. In the seventh month, and in the 20th day of the month, came the word of Yahweh by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shitti, Sh 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 Shiltil, all right, Shiltil, governor of Judah, okay, 
and to Joshua the son of Josedek, right, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who was left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do ye see it now? Is is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? They were looking at the temple like it's not this is the temple that Solomon built. Alright? And what did he say? Haggai two and four. And this is really speaking to us too. All right, in this time building the temple. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land. All right, said the Lord of hosts, for, and work, or get to work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. And as you go down, you see. He says, uh, yep, he's still talking to him. He says, it says, according to the word that I covenant with you when I, when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Those wonderful works are coming again. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Now, has that happened yet? No, that's going to happen when your Hawashai returns, man. Okay, you know, all of these when the destruction of Babylon and all of that, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come because the the, the Israelites who will be scattered will be brought back. You see, and I will fill this house with glory. That's going to be the actual temple, the spiritual temple, the tabernacle of God is with men, as it says in Revelation the twenty first chapter. Said the Lord of hosts, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Said the Lord of hosts. It says the glory of this latter house shall be greater <laughs> than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord. And he's speaking to who? Zerubbabel, the leadership. Okay. And what is that? That latter house. Okay. Speaking of the spiritual temple that will be built. That's why it says here in Revelation 21. Okay. Revelation 21 and, and 2 And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem Coming down from God out of heaven Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband Okay, New Jerusalem We're going to be in a glorified state We're going to have the laws written in us You see And we are going to be the temple And I heard a great voice Lord willing, I'm, I'm of that number out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle which they were building a physical tabernacle you know moses built the tabernacle all right which that was david okay he was the first to receive the instruction on how to put that tabernacle together and he had to tell the rest of israel get this material get that material okay the same thing is taking place in spirit here all right behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will deal, dwell with them because the temple, what, what did it represent? The direct presence of the most high on the earth. So we won't need an actual temple to go offer sacrifice for the sins of the nation of Israel. All of us will be perfect. But the tabernacle in which the law will be issued forth is with men now. See, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears. So that's what uh, 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 Haggai, you know, prophesied unto Zerubbabel. Okay. So going back. And Lord willing, we can just get through the rest of it. I don't want to, um, you know, do too much. Um, Zechariah 4. Let's see here. Zechariah 4 and 9, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts have sent me, all right, unto you, all right? <laughs> and it all, it all starts with the doctrine, that oil, the light, you see? But that light will be given unto the house of David, you see? 
all things will be restored all right through the one who will come from the loins and lineage of david all right he is on the right hand side of the heavenly father all right sending us down the understanding that oil so that we can finish the rebuilding of the tabernacle of david okay that's in amos all right the uh the uh ninth chapter okay it says for who have despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of zerubbabel with those seven all right they are the eyes of yahweh which run to and fro through the through the whole earth because the lord is with the house of david all right the lord is with that house all right ironically in the very next chapter it starts it starts to talk about the chariots who are going to come in everything they're with us man see and what is a plummet let's look up the uh, word plummet it's the same thing as the headstone okay basically the 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 the, the, the building man okay when you go to that root word what did we uh what did we come with but nah all right to build to establish see the throne of david will be established okay but who will sit on that throne yeah so dealing with the plummet uh let's not forget uh that it was david who gave solomon the blueprint on how to build that temple the very temple zerubbabel all right and the leaders and the priests and all of that who returned to jerusalem at that time were rebuilding was the 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 temple that solomon had built but who gave solomon the blueprint to build that temple all right this is a uh, first chronicles 28 and 9 this is david speaking to solomon and thou solomon my son know thou the god of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for Yahweh searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imagination of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. See that? It says, Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house and a sanctuary and be strong and do it. Then David gave Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof. And of the upper chambers thereof, the, and of the inner powers thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, which is where the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies was to uh, be, right? And, uh, and the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of Yahweh, and the chambers round about, and the treasuries of the house of God, and the treasuries of the dedicated things, all right? also for the courses of the priests and the levites and so forth all right and he, he talks about he gave him gold and so so the, the the very temple that solomon built the pattern was given to him by david just as all right uh, uh and when you get exodus 25 or maybe leviticus 25 let's see just as here believe that's the rebuilding of the yep the offering for the sanctuary yep uh exodus 25 and 40 all right as the lord gives moses you know the blueprint okay on how to uh you know what what items to get to build the you know the ark and the, the temple and stuff the tabernacle that moses built what did he say what did he show moses verse uh, 40 in exodus 25 and look that thou make them after the pattern which will show thee in the mount. So <laughs> that's another link, you know, with David being Moses. All right. Uh, both of them were given the blueprint. All right. The pattern of how to build that house. All right. So dealing with this plummet. Okay. Uh, that would be in the hand of Zerubbabel is that blueprint. Okay. The, 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 the. The true understanding, the true doctrine will flow through the house of David in the building of the temple, all right, in which it's Yahweh Shai, all right.
who will build that temple. All right, going back to Zechariah, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to just try to get through it. It says, for who have despised the day of small things? Okay, for they shall rejoice and see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. All right, because the, the, all of the fullness and the knowledge, wisdom and understanding will be fulfilled through the house of David. Okay, and it will be through Yahawashai. Okay, who's going to send us that understanding from on high. See, the angels are with us. All right, it says they are the eyes of Yahweh, which run to and fro through the whole earth. So we are in possession of some high level knowledge, brothers. You see, <laughs> the tabernacle of David is no joke, right? And see, people try to get outside of that and try to, you know, present the scriptures, but they don't want to establish what the most high is going to establish. And that's the tabernacle of David. And the angels are with us. Ironically, when you go to Zechariah, the fifth chapter, what does it start talking about? The chariots, the flying roll. Okay. Now, it says, then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? <laughs> All right. And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches? I guess he was silent for a minute. And he, the, Zechariah was like, what is this? What is this? Which threw the two golden pipes, empty the golden oil out of themselves. All right. What, what, what does that uh, 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 oil nourish? What is it emptied upon? All right. And he answered me and said, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. And he said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth, which we can go right back. To Revelation the eleventh chapter, okay. The northern and southern kingdom, the fulfillment of the temple, as he's you know the, the the they're measuring the temple. The fulfillment of the temple will be basically the hundred and forty-four thousand man, the northern and southern kingdom coming back together, okay. He said these verse four. These are the two olive trees, the prophets, the servants, the priesthood, and the two candlesticks standing before the god of the earth okay and, and 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 ironically when you read this chapter all right it talks about how eventually we would fall you know the dead bodies would lie in the street of the great city but then we will be restored okay stand up on our feet and be beamed up okay and once we're beamed up we're changed all right we have our ceremony crown but new jerusalem is eventually going to come down and establish the throne of David on the earth. You see? Now, we're doing that in this time. Let's get Zechariah the sixth chapter real quick. And then I'll end it off. And um This is uh let's see here. Let's see here. Symbolic crowns. Zechariah 6, this is speaking unto uh, Joshua the high priest, um, who at that time, when you read the third chapter, had filthy garments, you know. It says, um, Zechariah 6 and 12, and speak unto him, saying, Thou thus speakest the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. See that? The branch that's going to come from the loins of David. He shall grow up out of his place and shall build the temple of the Lord. All right. And that is going to be with souls, the believers, precious stones. That's why we're a spiritual priesthood. All right. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne and a council of peace shall be between them both. Woo! Who's that branch? Who's this speaking of? Huh? <laughs> All right. And the crowns shall be to Helam and to Tobijah and to Jediah and to him, the son of Zephaniah, and for a memorial in the temple of the Lord, which we these were some high level brothers. All right. Back then, I'll do some more research on who exactly they were. Um, it says, and they that are afar off. See, this is the prophecy. They that are afar off. See, we've been scattered shall come and build 
in the temple of the Lord, and ye shall know that Yahweh of hosts have sent me unto you. All right, and this shall come to pass if ye diligently obey your voice, the voice of Yahweh, the Lord your God. And that would happen in these latter days, and it is happening. So, you know, um, Apostle Tahar said he would, uh, you know, um, I mean, if there was anything that was off, you know, um, pretty sure Apostle Tahar will uh, correct it or anything that can be expounded upon. He said he wanted someone else to do it first and he would come back. So, Lord willing, uh, you all were edified. Um, and this was that video again. So hopefully, you know, this is uh, edifying unto you all. Peace to the house of David. All right. Oh, let me let's let's end it off on Amos 9. Amos 9. See, y'all don't want to talk about the house of David. You you Christians don't want to deal with the throne of David because what? That's dealing with the restoration of the true biblical Israelites. And you all don't want that to happen. <laughs> how, how funny. Uh, Amos 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof okay which Perez means breach all right and Perez was the uh, son of Judah and which when you go to that story okay it, it explains the you know it is it, getting given the foundation of the lineage in which the Messiah who's going to restore all things will return through okay as a matter of fact uh let's get Genesis 38 real quick Salakia Genesis 38 I just hit the point and this was a beautiful story as well all right just 20 38 and 29 and it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and he said how was this thou broken forth this breach be upon thee therefore was his name called Perez. okay now and that was a miraculous birth too <laughs> All right, because one put out his hand. All right, and then he went back. It, 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 you you have to read it. I don't want to go to. I did a lesson on that whole thing, but uh, Ferez is Parataza, which means breach, twin son, with Zerah by Judah of Judah by Tamar, the ancestor of the two families of Judah, the Hezronites and the Hamulites. From the Hezronites came the royal line of David and the Messiah. All right, and Zerubbabel, you know, Hezekiah, you know, Josiah, you know, Solomon, those are notable names who came from that line, man. Okay, and according to prophecy, that's how everything would be restored, all right, through the descendant of David. Now, Amos 9 and 11, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as the days of old, all right? That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. All right, we're going to get all of those lands back. All right, and we're going to possess you heathen. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. We're going to be joint heirs with the Messiah who will sit on that throne. All right, and David will be second in command. Okay, it says, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. That the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the, the hills shall melt. The mountain is going to be the government of Yashar Allah. It's going to drop sweet wine and all of the heathen governments are going to melt away. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and they shall build away cities and inhabit them. And shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and they shall make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land which I have given them, said the Lord thy God. <laughs> so with that, Shalom.